Hi, my name's Steve Adams. I'm the founder of VizDJ.com, where we give people the ability and confidence to build better dashboards in Tableau more quickly in order to save and improve people's lives. Today, I am joined by Andy, who is going to introduce himself shortly, and we are representing Tableau and Power BI. What we're going to do is just look at a very high level detail, compare and contrast the two tools to see how they do things differently. They obviously end up with very similar outcomes in some respects, but how we get there can be very different. So today's video is going to cover a number of topics. We're going to look at how we import data into the two tools. We're going to look at how we can clean up some rows and columns that we don't want in there. We're going to look at excluding some specific rows from our data because they may be duplicating data with subtotals, for example. We're going to unpivot data where we're going to take a bunch of uh, columns and pivot those down so that they create a better data structure to analyze. Then we're going to build some charts. We're going to build a tree map, we're going to build a bar chart, and we're going to build a line chart, combine all those together into a dashboard and add a little bit of interactivity. Now, before we dive into that, I'd just like to hand you over to Andy and introduce himself. So my name's Andy Brown. I'm co-founder of Wise Owl with my wife, Jenny, 30 years ago now. And we do training in Excel, in SQL Server, in programming, and of course, in Power BI. Thanks for that, Andy. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to um, pop open Tableau. And this is a workspace screen where we can create charts. Typically, there are other screens, but we're going to cut through to the bare necessities for today. So I want to connect through to data. I'm going to click on the connect to data. We then choose the connection type in terms of where the data is coming from. We can see here we've got a Microsoft Excel, which is the data type that we are looking at today. So I'm going to click on Microsoft Excel. I'm going to navigate onto my computer as to where that is. And I'm picking up the EU Superstore sample data. And he's very kindly allowed us to use the standard data set from Tableau, although I have manipulated it a little bit, which you'll see if you're a regular Tableau user. We're now on the data source screen where we get to visualize a little bit what the data looks like from a Tableau perspective. So we can see here that it's a little bit dirty. Why can I see that? Because the column headings are just coming up as F1, F2, F3, and it's not picking up what that data actually looks like. If we look down here, we see that actually the column headings are in row three. I've got customer ID, category, subcategory, etc., etc. So there's a couple of rows which are dirty. This data is a standard Tableau data set for demonstrations and for training purposes. It's got a whole bunch of dimensions in here. And in this case, we've also got some columns which are by date giving us a particular measure, which is quantity. So we can see we start at January 18 and the quantity values scroll over to give us uh, the data all the way over to the latest data set. There's a lot of nulls in there. That's not a very good shape for either Tableau or Power BI. So later on, we're going to want to pivot that data so that we have one column with the date in it and then another column with the quantity value in there. The other things we've got going on with this data set is it's coming from an Excel spreadsheet which is being used for a report. So it's got a title here, top level row with a title. And so there's a couple of rows here which we're not interested in either. And likewise, there's also columns here with no data at all because it's a report that we want to clean up and we don't see them on here. But there's also some subtotals which have been added uh, into here to bring in a subtotal for all of the, the different category values, which there are three of furniture, office supplies and technology. So that's how we connect through to data in Tableau. The next thing I'm going to do in Tableau is just clean up those columns and rows. So how can I do that? Well, we could use another tool which we have in our Tableau suite, which is called Tableau Data Prep. But actually what we need to do right now is very easy and very basic. And Tableau has this data interpreter capability over here, which I'm just going to click on. And what that's going to do is, is Tableau is going to then analyze the Excel spreadsheet and focus in on what it believes are the data areas on that data on that spreadsheet. 
and it's going to do that automatically. I can't really do much about whether it gets things right or wrong, but to be honest, it gets a lot of things right first time. In this case, for example, you can see now that we've connected through, we cleaned it up, and Tableau is now seeing and recognizing that top row of headers as being the, uh, the names that we're looking for. It's also not looking at the empty columns, so it's removed those completely. And that is us connecting through to the data in a much more clean way. Andy, how does that do? Andy, how does Power BI do that? So Power BI doesn't have a data interpreter as such, like Tableau does. Instead, what happens is when you load some data, it applies a series of sensible steps. Now, it hasn't quite gone far enough, so what I need to do is also remove the top row, which contains just nulls. And then what I need to do is promote the first row to make them into headers, column headers. And finally, I need to delete the blank columns, which are columns one, four, and I think nine as well. So we'll just select those columns. And I normally just press the delete key, but I'll choose remove columns. So that takes us to the same place in Power BI as Steve got to in Tableau. Thank you, Andy. So we have now got our clean state, but we've got a slight problem, and that is that on the Excel spreadsheet, we have some subtotals that have been introduced. Let me just show you those. So here's the original underlying Excel spreadsheet. You can see here, with somebody's put a subtotal in, and we're adding up all the values above it. And we've got those in customer ID column, and they're adding up the category subtotals. Obviously, that means we're double counting, so we want to remove those. In Tableau, we can go to our data source filter and I can add a filter on here. And there's different ways I could do that. I could go to my customer ID, for example, and I could find the row by looking for the value which is written on there, which is subtotal. I could click on there and I can exclude those. Or perhaps I could go to another column. Let's go to the category column itself, for example. And in there, we'll see that there are the three categories. But we've also got the null, in which case I can exclude the nulls. So that means any row which hasn't got any data in that particular column is going to be excluded from our... What I want to do now is to remove all the subcategories, which are null. But if I click on the drop arrow next to it to filter by that column, you can see null isn't one of the values. Now, there's two clues as to why this might be the case. It says list may be incomplete there. And at the bottom it says column profiling is based on the top thousand rows. What happens is when Power BI brings in the data to speed up your processing, it only brings in a representative sample. One way to make sure it brings in everything, there's many others, is to choose to sort by a column. And then it forces Power BI to bring in absolutely all the data. So what I can now do is click on the same little icon and choose to exclude the null values. And when I choose OK, I'll have the same data that the Tableau part of the video did. Now the last step in our data cleanup. In the Excel spreadsheet, you can see here that we had different columns for each of the quantities by month. We want to pivot those by selecting them, clicking on the drop down, and choosing Pivot. And Tableau has now created two columns from all of those separate data columns. The first one called Pivot Names, Field Names, Date. I'm going to rename those quantity and I'm going to check the data types. So here we have a number, that's correct. And here for the date, we can see that Tableau is currently seeing that as a string. That's what the ABC means. If I click on there, I can select date. And now Tableau is going to read that column as a date. It's made every single one of those months at the first of the month so that we can analyze that correctly later on. So to unpivot data, as it's called in Power BI, is virtually identical as it was in Tableau. What I can do is select my first column, scroll all the way across to the right, holding down the shift key, click on the last column, and then right click on them and choose to unpivot the selected columns. And just as in Tableau, what it will do is create two new columns called attribute and attribute and value, which I will rename to date and quantity. Now the date column needs translating into a date. You can see it's coming as a text. So I'll change that to a date column. 
and it does the same thing in Power BI. It makes it the first day of each month. And for the quantity column, for some bizarre reason, which I don't quite understand, it's decided some of these are dates. So what I'm going to do is change this to a whole number. So that's the end of my data transformation process and extraction. What I now need to do is load it into Power BI Desktop with this additional step. I need to close and apply it, and I'll be taken back into Power BI Desktop, and you can see there it's brought in the table with all the fields within it. Cool. Thanks for that, Andy. We said we're going to draw a couple of charts, and in Tableau, we create each individual chart on a sheet, much like uh, an Excel workbook. We have worksheets within our workbook for Tableau. So on my first sheet, I'm gonna create a tree map. There's multiple ways we can do this. I'm gonna take the quick way. I want to do a tree map by country, so I'm gonna select my country, and I'm gonna do a multi-select on my measure. In this case, it's gonna be quantity, so that's uh, clicking the Control key. And I can now go to show me. This is going to be a list, give me a list of different charts that we can create, one of which is this tree map. You'll notice that some of them are grayed out. That's because I've only selected a particular combination of dimensions and measures. Uh, depending on what your selection is, you'll see different options available to you. I can click on tree map. And there we have our tree map. And you'll notice what Tableau is doing is it's color coding those automatically based upon the measure so that we can see that France is the darkest blue because that's got the highest value of quantity. Over to you, Andy. So to create the Power BI version of the tree map, I'm going, just going to go to my visuals on the right hand side, as they're called, click on the tree map visual, and then choose which fields I want to display in it. You can see everything's added on the same page. I could, if I wanted to, add other pages to my report. So what I'll do is choose the country and region and the quantity, and that will create my tree map. Unlike in Tableau, it doesn't automatically come in with conditional formatting set. So I'll go to my properties and I'll choose my colors and I'll choose advanced controls, as it's called, to apply something called conditional formatting. I'm going to choose a gradient. I'll just leave all the defaults set, and when I choose OK, I should get a tree map which looks very sim similar to Steve's. That's great. Thanks very much. And now I'm going to just rename my worksheet so I can refer to that later on as tree map and click on another one to build our bar chart. So I'm just going to call this worksheet bar so we can refer to it later. Now I'm going to bring in subcategory and we're going to look at subcategory quantity values. I'm going to drag that onto our shelf. You can see up here we're doing a visual drag and drop with Tableau and these items here are referred to as pills and we have green pills and we have blue pills. It's not like the matrix. The green pills are continuous values and the blue pills are discrete dimensions typically. I can sort from top to bottom. I can bring in a label. I'm going to do a copy drag onto the end of our bars here and I'm also going to remove the axis so that we're no longer seeing that. And that is a simple bar chart. So Andy, creating a bar chart in Power BI. I'm going to choose a slightly different way to create the bar chart. Uh, we're going to begin with the columns, so I'll choose subcategory and I will choose the quantity. Just move that up here. And what Power BI will do is choose what it thinks is the most appropriate visual type. And you can see it's grouping by the subcategory and it's choosing to sum the quantity. So what I want to do is change the visual type because I wanted a bar chart, so I'll change it there. And then I'll apply a sum of the formatting, which Steve did as well. So we'll go to the formatting tab. And the first thing I'll do is turn my X axis off. And then what I'll do is apply some data labels. So to do that, I'll look for my data labels and I'll turn them on. And the other thing Steve did was to sort it. I don't need to do that because by chance it's chosen the same or the correct sort order to begin with. But if I did need to, I could do that there. Cool. Thank you very much for that, Andy. So the last chart we wanted to show you is a simple time series on a line chart. I am going to bring in my measure 
and I'm going to bring in my date field onto my column. And in this case, I'm going to drill down from year to month. I'm not interested in the quarter granularity, so I just drag that off until the red cross appears so I can remove that. And instead of actually having those discrete months by year, I'm going to just take my year pill and pop it onto the color marks card so that we can differentiate now between the years, but we're looking at January through to December. I don't like that color palette, so I can change the color palette. I'm gonna double click into the color palette here, palette and assign that instead. So we have 2021 in dark, 2018 in light. Click on apply. And there we can see our colored line chart. Over to you, Andy. So to add in the final one of our three charts, I'm going to click on a line chart and then I'll choose to display on that the date and the quantity. The date comes in as a hierarchy, so I don't want the quarter and I don't want the day. And I also don't want the year because that's going to go on a slicer. I'll get rid of that. And then on the right hand side, I will add in something called a slicer, as I said, which is a way of filtering data. I'll choose to display on that my year. And to make this look the same as it did in Tableau, I'll make it into a list. So that's my slicer. What I don't have on my line chart is the year as a stacked line chart. So what I'm going to do is add that in. So I'll take the year and then drag it down onto the legend. And I may need to scroll down a bit so you can actually see that so my face isn't actually obscuring that. So now I've got the situation. I can click on any of these years and it will filter the data, not just in this line chart, but also in all the other visuals on the same page to show the data for the year I've chosen. Now, one thing I can't do easily is format the slicer to make each of these the right color for the line appropriate line because the slicer and the line chart are actually two separate visuals in this case. There are other ways around, ways around that, one of which is to apply something called a theme, but I can't actually quite reproduce the same things I can in Tableau. Brilliant. One thing that you would have noticed is that Power BI, you're automatically building things directly in the dashboard itself. With Tableau, we do it the other way around. So we've built up our worksheets and now we want to combine them into our dashboard. So I hover over here and you can see we've got new dashboard. I'm going to click on here. It's a slightly different screen. We can see our three worksheets over here with our items in. I can drag them into my dashboard. And I'm going to build my dashboard up by dragging my items in. I've got a container over here which has automatically been added with my legends in it. I'm actually not that interested in those, so I'm gonna click that container and remove them from the dashboard. I'm also gonna select my bar chart and squeeze it in so we get to see the whole truth in the entire view. We can, if we wanted to, turn off the titles from the charts that I've actually named these and the last thing we want to do is add a bit of interactivity. So I might want to select an item on my tree map, for example, that filters the rest of my dashboard. If I click on the worksheet, I can see that there's a users filter option here. So I can click on my tree map and let's click on the bar chart as well. And now if I click on France, we're filtering both the bar chart and the live chart down to that level of detail. I can do a multi-select by dragging those items to do that filtering as well. So Andy, how do you add the interactivity on your dashboard? So Steve said, I've already got the visuals on the same page, so I already in effect have a dashboard, but I do need to get visual interactions working perfectly. So for the moment, if I click on France, for example, you can see that while it's filtering the line chart, what it's doing with this bar chart is just highlighting the areas corresponding to France. And that may be what I wanted, but isn't on this. What I'm going to do is go into something called editing my visual interactions. And what I'm going to do is say that when I uh, click on a country in any other visual, then I want to filter this data. So let's try that one again now, if I deselect France. So when I click on a country now, it will filter both the line chart and the bar chart. And that's pretty much the end of my Power BI. What I'll now do is hand over to Steve to wrap up. Hope you've enjoyed the video and the comparison. And please do let us know if you have any other ideas for things you'd like us to cover.
that was a high level comparison of how Tableau and Power BI do the same things. We are going to dive into some more detailed comparisons in future editions, and we'd love to hear from you if you've got some suggestions as to what you'd like us to show you. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.